Hi all, Plantside Agent here. Today we're going to take a look at this Jerry mini stove. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Okay, let's take a look at this. Um, it's it's a collapsible stove. It's uh, this has to be the Jerry mini stove, but it was also went under the name of uh, Hank Roberts uh, Browning and EFI. It was manufactured by the uh, EFI company. I don't know anything about it, but it started back in the late 60s and 70s, 80s. A uh, good buddy of mine had one of these, and I thought it was a pretty cool little stove. So, well, let me let's take a, a quick look at it. It's, it's, it comes in two halves here. Let's pull it apart. You've got the main valve assembly. You've got the jet head. And uh, most people, including my buddy, always had like a paper towel or something in there to keep it from rattling around. Otherwise, you had all this metal in here. <laughs> you have a noisemaker. But um, like I say, the design is really cool. So what you do is you take the, the top of it, which is the base for the stove, and it just screws in. Oh, I'll just go over this valve real quick. Um, the... This is called a Lindahl valve, this little needle, and it's like uh, the type that you uh, used to fill up basketballs and stuff to pump them up, same little needle-like affair. And uh, the canisters, which aren't made anymore, and I'll have a picture of the canister, and then next uh, you'll see the uh, little nipple that the, uh, the valve shipped into to, uh, to let the fuel out, okay? And uh, let's see, oh, while I'm at it, uh, you can buy hose adapters for these, which will, you know, connect to like uh, your standard isopropane canister. And I think they also will let you adapt to some of the other propane uh, tanks. Uh, probably the only downside of that is, is they are, uh, they run anywhere from 30 to 25 bucks. So if you want to sell out that kind of money for an old stove, <laughs> You could probably buy a pretty nice stove for about the same amount of money, unless you just really love this one and you want to use uh, different fuels with it. Then they are available. I think I, I did see a video where a guy had one. I think it was uh, uh, Blue Ridge Bushcraft had one where he had the adapter. I thought about getting the adapter, but I thought, nah, I'm not gonna spend the money. So anyway, so anyway, the the bottom screws in very easily okay and then you put the pot mount on top and then you've got the uh, little jet head burner head screws in and snug all that down and there you go you got, uh, got yourself a nice little stove it's also very stable that's one of the advantages some of those the newer stoves are not quite as stable as you can see, a lot of people use these, just put their stove on top, oops, over here, but it's even, as you can see, it's actually a little bit wider than this, so it's even going to be more stable. Okay, uh, yeah, you just attach the fuel in here, and you can adjust it here. I, if I had the cable and all, I'd definitely do a burn test, but I really can't do that. Um, so that's probably... The big disadvantage of this stove, I bought this just, just for collecting purposes, and like I say, my old backpacking buddy had one of these, used it for years. Although, they could be a little finicky if you didn't get the fuel set up quite right. Uh, the canister, sometimes uh, it flare up, and it took it took a little preheat time, but overall it worked great. I mean, he, he used it for years. He probably still has it, but he, was, he didn't offer to give it to me, <laughs> so I bought this one on, uh, on eBay. So, and you can find these on eBay. Oh, what did I see? Around 20 bucks, 30 bucks. I think I paid less than 17 or 18 for this one. So, anyway, just for collecting. So, besides not being able to get the fuel for it, or you're going to have to buy an adapter uh, hose, the other probably disadvantage of most of the older stoves is the width of the pot stand. If, if you look at this one, it's. Uh, Let's get, get the right side. 
it's uh, four and a half inches or uh, 11 and a half uh, centimeters. So that's that's pretty wide considering most people today are using the, the smaller pots like the 500, 750 uh, milliliter pots, um, similar size to this uh, Ollie Camp. As you can see, it's not going to fit <laughs> on there. Uh, so, of course, back when these were out, the cook pots, uh, myself included, the cook pots were actually uh, bigger. So this size, uh, this wider pot stand wasn't a problem. Plus, it gave you more stability with a bigger cook pot. I always carried a two quart cook pot just because it had a lot of flexibility and it didn't weigh that much more than a one quart. But as you can see, even the small Trangia kettle can be used on it, but barely. But that was probably about as uh, small a pot bottom as you could you could get on one of these kind of stoves. So that's probably the other, uh, what you could say, I wouldn't say necessarily a disadvantage, but with some of the older stoves, I've noticed that the uh, pot stands are a lot bigger. For, uh, for bigger pots. So to put this back together, you just have to quickly put it apart. Of course in the field you waited till it cooled down. <laughs> but yeah, then they all just uh, pieces fit back in there. You probably have a little room for, for your matches or a small lighter and um, clamps together. Small, compact, really it's a cool little design. That's kind of why I decided to uh, to get this one just added to my stove collection. So let's see. Did I forget anything? Probably, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and call this video good. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.